George Gorg Simon Ohm. 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 The unit of resistance. Right? The unit of resistance. And this tells us, like, if it's, if it's a 10 ohm resistance, it's almost a pure conductor. If it's a 1 mega ohm resistance, it's almost an insulator. And then the levels in between are how much or how little this device will conduct. But so the unit of resistance, named after Ohm. But Ohm came up with a law, which is a relationship of volts, amps, ohms, resistance, and watts, which I showed you the watt formula earlier. Amps, how much current's flowing. Volts, the electrical pressure. Ohms, the amount of resistance. Okay? And watts, how much power is being derived. Okay, and here's that little formula again, a little triangle I'm showing you. Ohm's law, I equals E divided by R. So current is equivalent to voltage divided by resistance. Resistance is equivalent to voltage divided by current. And voltage is equivalent to current times resistance. I draw that little triangle because it helps me remember. If I ever have an opportunity to forget, that makes it easy. And then we come up with ohm being the unit of resistance. And we talked about resistance earlier. And so here's a symbol for a resistor. There's a picture of a resistor. And there's a resistor color code. And you'll see the color code has black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white, gold, silver, and then no color. Okay? There's bands on this resistor. Okay, and the first band is the first significant digit. The second band is the second significant digit. The third band is a multiplier. And the fourth band is a tolerance. So let me explain that to you. <clears throat> this, this one here is a yellow, purple, yellow resistor. If it's yellow, then it's a four. Four. If it's purple or violet, then it's a 7. So this is a 47 something. Now, the yellow is again a 4. So this is a 4, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0 resistor with a silver, which means 10%. That means it's 4, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0 plus or minus 10%. Y'all got it? Okay, you had a question. Unfortunately, no. And there are a lot of, and the question was, what about people that are colorblind? You know, this has been a very unfair system for people that can't see color. But you can take, if you are colorblind, you can take uh, some pride in knowing that if you see less color, you actually have more rods. Cones make color in your eye, retina, and rods make black and white. And so if you can't see color, you actually see more detail. So you can see more detail than someone sees color. So the people that are colorblind in the electronics industry have to take a voltmeter, ohmmeter, and find out by measuring. And fortunately, now there are a few resistors where they actually write it out, but they're so small, unfortunately, they don't do it. So, yeah, there's several. And um, I made one here. Beaten British rage over your great big victorious George Washington. That one's one I made up because I could say it, okay, as opposed to the one that's bad boys. Uh, when we're in resistors, I want to talk to you about basic resistive circuits. The most basic resistive circuits is a battery and a resistor. You have a current flow. The next most basic one is a series circuit. Here we have a battery. Oops. Here we have a battery, and we have four resistors. And... This is, what side is that positive or negative there? Positive. That's positive. This is negative. That means electrons are flowing through here, going through there, coming back here. In this circuit, because the same current flows through all resistors, that means the current is the same in every point of the circuit. The voltage, however, divides. So, 
the voltage of this battery, if this battery is putting out 20 volts and all these resistors here are of equal value, that means each resistor is going to drop 5 volts. Depending on the way the resistance is, is mixed, the voltage will shift, but whatever happens, the voltage dropped across these resistors adds together to equal to the supply voltage. And like I said, so if this is dropping, let's say this is 20 volts, these are all the same, this will be 5 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts, adding up to 20. Whatever happens, all the voltage drops around this circuit have to equal the battery. The current's always the same. The total resistance, if I was to take this battery out and, and measure all these with a meter, it would be the sum of all the resistors. If these resistors were all 10 ohms, it'd be 10, 20, 30, and 40. It adds up to make a total resistance. Whatever the resistance is for each one of these is the total resistance. Any questions? Okay. The next most basic resistive circuit is the parallel circuit. Now let me, let me go back here and just give you something I just thought of. You know your little Christmas lights that you have on your little Christmas tree? And years ago you uh, had lights that uh, when one would go out, all the, the, none of them would, would, the rest would run, and then they went with the cheaper lights. The new lights are in series, so if one little bulb goes out, they all go out. And if it's in uh, parallel, which is the next one, then if one bulb goes out, the rest remain running. So this circuit here is like your house wiring. In your house wiring, you have a supply coming into the house, and you have all these various loads throughout the house. So this is a parallel circuit. And in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same everywhere. All the loads see the same voltage. But the current divides. Because what happens is, here's the negative, so the electrons leave and they go down to this bottom conductor here. Some go this way, some go this way, some go that way, and some go that way. And then they all combine again and return back to the source of supply. Okay? So, the voltage is the same throughout the whole circuit. The current, the total amount of amperage, current, is equivalent to this amperage plus that one, plus that one, plus that one. Okay? So, all the individual amperages have to add up to make the total amperage. And where it gets really bizarre is the resistance. The more loads we have on a parallel circuit, the lower the total resistance. The formula for finding total resistance in a parallel circuit is 1 over the total R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? To give you an example, let's say all of the, we've got four resistors and they're equal. These are all 40 ohms. 40 ohm, 40 ohm, 40 ohm, 40 ohm. Okay? The total resistance of this circuit, anybody want to take a guess? be 10 ohms because as the number of resistors increase the total resistance goes down. You can never have a total resistance equivalent to one resistor in a parallel circuit unless all the other resistors are bad and they're open. Okay, any questions about that? That's the next most basic resistive circuit. We learned series circuit and that can be true for light bulbs, lots of different things current flows through everything. Parallel circuit, voltage is the same, current divides. We get to these two people, actually three. Uh, Leonin, Leon Thevenin, Gustav Kirchhoff, and Edward Norton. Now, these are people that came up with other theories about circuits. <coughs> Thevenin, this person here, said you can take any circuit that has resistors, and a battery and make an equivalent circuit of one battery with a resistor in series. Norton, this one here, 
said that you can take any circuit that's made of batteries, a battery and a resistor, and make a battery with a parallel resistor equivalent. That's just a way of, let's say I'm, I don't know what's inside this black box, but I measure it and I can determine uh, what the resistance is and what the voltage is, and I can make an equivalent circuit to that black box to this method. Uh, Kirchhoff said he determined that the current entering a point was equivalent to a current leaving a point. Well, that seems pretty obvious. If I have a wire, current going in is equivalent to current coming out, unless it can divide up. Um, he said also that the sum of the voltage drops around any closed loop always equals the applied voltage. So let's just say I got a 30 volt battery here and each one of these resistors is dropping 10 volts. And since this is a series circuit, that's 10 plus 10 plus 10, making 30. So if I take 30 and subtract it from 30, it's equal to zero. Or if I have 30, it's equivalent to the supply. That's those theories. You need to know them. People will ask you, you know what a Thevenin equivalent circuit is? You know what a Norton equivalent circuit is? Do you know what a Kirchhoff analysis is? This is it in a nutshell. Henry. Now, Joseph Henry is the unit of Henry, which is inductance. And it applies to, uh, we pass them around, inductors. That's a basic inductor here. It's a coil of wire. Here's a transformer. Here's a relay. Now, this inductor basically is a coil of wire. When DC flows through an inductor, it's unaffected except by the internal resistance of the wire. When AC flows through it, however, the magnetic field that's built up around the outside of the wire is building and building and building, and then when the, when the phase changes or when the cycle changes, then that magnetic field has to collapse and it fights the change. It's impedance. It's impeding the change. And so an inductor is a device that will pass DC, DC and block AC or impede AC as opposed to a capacitor which passes AC and blocks DC. A transformer is a device that will change voltages and currents. If I have a, a coil of wire on one side and I have another coil of wire right next to it, and depending on the winding relationship, let's say I have 10 coils on one side and 100 coils on the other side, and I have perfect connectivity, which is not going to happen, but just to say for the point of argument, if I put 10 volts on the side that has a winding of 10, I will have 100 volts on the side of the winding of 100. So I've increased my AC voltage from 10 to 100. That's what a transformer does. Now, conversely, since power has to be a constant, if I have 10 volts and 10 amps on this side, when I go to the side with 100, I have 100 volts and 1 amp. So it's a constant, constant power ratio, but the voltage is going up on one side while the current's going down, so you can change your voltages this way. That's what transformers are for. Thank you.